everyone and welcome to the final episode of this series of The Whole Tooth. Now for this episode we have some brilliant questions to round off the series so without further ado let's get to it. Our first question comes from Peter in South Africa who wants to know about shark hybridization and he even has thought of a name for a potential new species. Check it out. Can a great white hair baby with the tiger shark? Baby tiger sharks with the tiger shark. What do you think we would call them if it was a great white that had a baby with the tiger shark? Griger shark. A griger shark. <laughs> <laughs> When two different species mate to produce offspring, it's called interspecies hybridization. Interspecies hybridization is common in plants and insects, and even occurs in vertebrate animals, though it's much less common. When interspecies hybridization does occur in vertebrates, like sharks and rays, it's usually between two very closely related species. For example, hybrid pups have been found between the common smoothhound shark and the black spotted smoothhound shark. Because a tiger shark and a white shark are so genetically different from each other, they would not be able to mate to produce offspring. So answering that question there was Sydney, who is a shark geneticist, and she specializes in the conservation biology of apex predators. If you think that sounds interesting, you can check out a link to her work just here. Now, I like to think that my knowledge of sharks and rays is pretty good, but there is so much to learn and there is one species that I don't know that much about, the sawfish. Now the sawfish gets its name from its long snout and I was wondering what the purpose of having such a long snout is. Now luckily Save Our Seas is full of amazing experts from all different backgrounds and we've asked this question to Alifa who is an expert in all things sawfish. Um, the sawfish's saw, otherwise called the rostrum, is both amazing tracking devices and sensory devices um, and weapons as well. Now there are very minute ports throughout the saw of the sawfish which can pick up the electrical fields created by any other fish or animals around it. Now they can pick up the, those electrical fields and catch their prey even the water is murky. These are amazingly hydrodynamic mechanisms that the sawfish has. Um, they can actually move their saw side by side without creating any vibrations, right? So the prey wouldn't even know even seconds before they are being caught. But I would like to add though, um, the sawfish are extremely docile and nice um, and homeless animals to humans. Although, if you want to capture them, they might inflict serious injuries. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. So they're actually multi-purpose, that's pretty cool. And imagine being able to detect electricity with your nose. Sharks are amazing. All right, so moving on from sawfish snouts to shark sense of smell with our next question from Ella. And we've asked Alison Towner to answer this question. Alison is a white shark biologist who specializes in the movement of white sharks. So she should know a thing or two about these swimming noses. Why is the shark's sense of smell so much more powerful than that of humans? Like what makes them sensitive to smell? Hi Ella, great question. Yes, sharks have way better smell than human beings, uh, far more sensitive. And the main reason behind this is of course, their nostrils only process smell. They don't have to breathe through them like us human beings do. So the name of their nostrils is actually, they're given the name nares. They're located at the front of the snout of the shark usually. And once the smell enters these nostrils or these nares, then the olfactory lamellae process that scent and transmit the signal to the brain. Two thirds of sharks' brains in some species are de dedicated entirely to smell. How cool is that? So our final question of the series comes from Ross in South Africa, who wants to know about endangered sharks. Now answering this question, we have Charlie Young, you might also know as Ocean Magpie on Instagram. Now Charlie is a marine biologist and a fantastic science communicator. I want to know what the most endangered shark species is because I've always wondered that. Unfortunately there are so many species of shark now that are considered critically endangered and there's been a really scary statistic come out recently that says that 30% of rays and sharks are now threatened with extinction. But there's one shark in particular called the Ponder Cherry Shark that hasn't been seen for nearly 50 years and researchers think that it might be extinct. 
So this animal looks quite a lot like a grey reef shark and used to be regularly found in the Indo-Pacific around the coastal waters of Oman, China and India. But like many sharks, due to overfishing, its numbers have substantially reduced. Well, that's a wrap on series one of The Whole Tooth. And what a brilliant note from Charlie there to end the series on. There is so much that we can do to help save our seas, but it all begins with learning about how amazing they are. We really, really hope that you enjoyed this series as much as we enjoyed making it. And if you did like it, be sure to let us know in the comments or by liking and sharing this video. And remember that you can always subscribe to our channel for more ocean content. A massive thank you to all the incredible scientists and communicators who contributed answers for this series and to everybody who submitted your brilliant questions. And last but very much not least, thank you at home for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.